Hey everyone, so um, today I'm doing a little bit of repairs on the van. I um, had the day off so I wanted to get a few things done. First thing I wanted to take care of because it's kind of in need is my uh, coolant tank here is uh, has a leak around the edges. So it's been leaking coolant on and off and I think this is kind of maybe a problem that a lot of people with ProMasters have is the uh, coolant reservoir here kind of starts to leak around the seams um, and that's kind of why we often lose coolant. So my plan is to replace my original coolant reservoir with a new one that I got online um, off of uh, Mopar. Um, you can definitely see the difference between the old one and coloration, all that fun stuff, and the new one. So uh, I'm going to kind of break down exactly what I did um, and, and basically how I did the repair. Hi, we're Chris and Tracy, and this is our van, Helen of Troy Vado. We bought Helen last year during COVID after all of our international trips were going down the cancellation pathway. Being in the healthcare industry, we were still tied to our full-time jobs, but really needed to get away. Well, safe to say it's been a lot of fun this last year. We've traveled nearly 25,000 miles in our van and have visited nine states and 10 national parks. We just hit our one year anniversary, or as I like to call it, the Vaniversary, and we've decided what better way to celebrate than bringing you along for the ride. So we've decided to document the good, the bad, and the ugly. And if you like what you see, go ahead and click subscribe to follow along on our part-time van life. So the first step you probably saw already was that I got a uh, fluid pump and I pumped out all the coolant that I had in the reservoir into a container. That way I was able to at least uh, recover some of the coolant and not just let it all go to waste. Okay, now that I got it mostly drained, I've moved the coolant out of the way so I don't knock it over. I got a size 13 millimeter sockets that I'm gonna remove the main bolt. That you see here, already kind of loosened up. And go ahead and remove it like so. Once you have it all the way removed, just go ahead and pull it out and put it somewhere safe. Often like your pocket. So one of the problems that I found quickly when I was getting ready to start this project is that there is some interesting looking clamps on the uh, coolant hose that at least come from the factory. I talked to a few friends that were mechanics and they basically said these are one time clamps and that uh, basically once you remove them there's no, uh, no getting them back on. So I went ahead and I bought a couple of pipe clamps here, or excuse me, hose clamps. I uh, got these at uh, uh, Lowe's, I think they were like a dollar each, so uh, that's what they were recommended to go ahead and replace them with. They also said go ahead and use some dykes or a grinder to uh, get them off, but I think I'm going to try dykes as to not ruin anything else. So now that I've gotten these uh, two return hoses off, they're actually pretty easy. I didn't need to get too much uh, mutilative, if you will, mutilated too much. Got a little screwdriver, was able to pop them off. Likewise, when I got the bolt out underneath, I knew there was kind of a main hose down here, um, and there's a clamp on it, as you can see right here. Um, went ahead and used this kind of underneath it to just kind of pop it right off. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that off, and you know, make sure to keep that hose vertical so it doesn't leak. So what you're looking at here is uh, where I removed the coolant reservoir and I'm about to put the new one in. So I'm going to go ahead and set the reservoir in there and get in, it in place before I connect all the uh, return hoses here. So the first hose I'm going to connect is that main one, it's mentioned keeping it vertical. That way not to lose whatever coolant is in the reservoir. Make sure to get that hose all the way up there snug so it meets firmly with 
the uh, little connection uh, port there. All right, as you can see, I was actually able to reuse the uh, clamp that uh, was clamping the bottom, which is pretty awesome. Uh, it took a good amount of time to finagle it on there, but it's on there tight, and I've used my uh, uh, needle nose here a couple times to kind of make sure it was bent right into shape and all that good fun stuff. So, score one for me. I'm gonna go ahead and get this twisted around popped kind of back into its little spaces here and you know make sure it all sits here properly before I screw it down okay got everything kind of cleaned up I brought a uh, paper towel over uh, a little shop towel to uh, kind of wipe everything down make sure it was nice and clean before I got everything seated that way I could tell if there's any leaks so I'm going to go ahead and take my 13 millimeter socket and go ahead and pop this guy back in this place and get that firmly affixed. You know, obviously not too tight that it breaks it, but you know, tight enough. One thing to note is when you are reconnecting the hoses, um, there are these little white lines. I mean, you can tell where the other clamp was, but there's little white lines that'll tell you exactly where you want to put your clamps. On this hose, I had to use a uh, kind of a, a, a store-bought, if you will, uh, hose clamp. Um, main reason for that is I uh, was unable to get the other, or at least get this clamp off without damaging it. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that put on there and then get it kind of screwed tightly down into place. So from this angle you can see uh, the uh, new little hose clamp that I put on it there. And then I'm gonna get the final little return hose connected. So I got the final hose connected here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and try and use the existing hose clamp. It might still be usable, but I'm not entirely sure. Um, we'll see here in a second. Uh, Wish me luck. Well, looks like I got it all back connected. Looks like it's all installed. Now all I gotta do is give it the old field test and give it a whirl and see how it, uh, see how it performs. So some time ago I had gone ahead and gone to Amazon and gotten some uh, Mopar antifreeze coolant that's specific for um, the ProMaster here. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in there and uh, kind of get it all topped off. Figured I'd use some of the new stuff uh, before I used any of the old stuff. Give it kind of a pseudo flush, if you will. Not quite over flush, but somewhat close. Of course, I had just as much to get to the minimum line. But not really kind of in between, so I'm going to have to reuse a little bit of uh, what I took out. But I think overall I got a vast majority of it as some new coolant. Alright, thank you so much for watching this video um, on how to change the uh, coolant reservoir on the van. It was a pretty easy process, um, probably saved me a few hundred dollars taking it down to the dealer. Um, a lot of the ProMasters do have leaky reservoirs, so you can get it online. I think I paid less than 100 bucks for the reservoir i'll put a link somewhere down here and then um yeah literally took me maybe an hour to get it changed out so uh look into doing it if you have that same problem don't take it to a dealer it's real easy um hope you enjoyed the video kind of try to do it as step by step as possible otherwise check out some of our other videos um hopefully the next one that you see will be us doing our baja series so uh tune in click the like button on this video and hopefully if you enjoyed us uh, go ahead and click subscribe and follow along take care